Good evening, everybody. I hope you're all well. I'm very pleased to welcome all of you tonight, and especially to Luke Challoner, who is our featured young performer for this evening's platform. Uh, can I just check that you're all, you all can hear me? Excellent. Uh, so Luke is currently studying a master's degree in Violet Gamba with Vittorio Gielmi at the Mozartium in Salzburg. And he previously studied at the Royal College of Music in London with Richard Boothby and Reiko Ichise. Uh, Luke also plays baroque cello, theobo, organ, viola d'amore and baritone, having originally studied cello at, at Chatham School of Music in Manchester, where he developed a passion for baroque music. At the Royal College of Music, he played in master classes with Jordi Saval, Hilla Pearl, Sarah Cunningham, Christoph Croix, and Paolo Pandolfo. In his spare time, he is heavily involved in making and researching historical gut strings for various instruments. So a um, multi-talented uh, person indeed. And uh, uh, welcome, uh, Luke, and also everyone. So Luke, you've prepared a selection of uh, performances for us this evening, which you've pre-recorded. And you're going to guide us through all those pieces, Luke, and also tell us a little bit about those, uh, those pieces as we go along. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Luke, over to you. Uh, good evening from Salzburg, and uh, thanks for having me. <laughs> um, so the, the first uh, video or two videos I've made um, is a suite composed of um, half Marais and half Fauqueray. Um because I think it's an interesting contrast. Um,
Wonderful. Thank you very much, Luke. So just to say that uh, the complete performances of all uh, the uh, vi videos uh, from tonight's session can be seen uh, from the website. Uh, Luke is going to play uh, the films, but not complete uh, takes. We won't have time to listen to all of them. Um, but you can view them again from the Viola de Gamba Society website. So Luke, um, just to ask you a few things about the uh, uh, suite that you've concocted from uh, those uh, different, the different pieces, pieces by Marianne Faulkner. I mean, it's a really interesting idea. I've never thought about doing that myself. Um, how do you view these two composers? I mean, what do you do, for example, when you, when you uh, confront it, when you give it a piece of Murray and then you then play Faulkner? How, how do you play them? What, what are the different things that, 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 that you do? I mean, is it a physical thing? Is it a, a mental thing or both? Well, I find um, that the two composers um, need two very different mentalities um, in the way that they're approached. Because I think um, Marais' style, uh, it's more coming from the classical French school um, and it's very rhetorical and declamatory. Um, and then I think with both of the four Corrées, because there's the question about who wrote the pieces in the book, whether it was the father or the son, um, it's more influenced heavily by the um, Italian style, and in particular uh, from the Italian violin music and Corelli and etc. I mean, on a on a basic technical level, do you do you use a different bow technique to play Mare and uh, from when you're playing Faulkere, um I mean, it, it, are you, for example, using a more legato bow stroke for Mare and a, a less legato, a more percussive bow stroke for Faulkere, or does it, does it not really apply that, as simple as that? What What do you think? Uh, I think on the whole, I tend to use a more detached and off the string one for Mare, um, because I try and emulate quite a lute-like sound. So there's um, a stronger attack at the beginning of the note and then it decays. Um, and then in four Corre, there's lots of passages where it's more going between the strings with more legato and very florid, long, gestures. Do you, do you have another uh, sample of Marie and Faulkner or, and or Faulkner for us? I mean, we've got a few minutes to, uh, before we get on to the next stage of uh, the interview, but I think we've got an, a, a time for another Marie or possibly Faulkner. Sure. Um, I've got Les Voix Humaines uh, by Marie. Lovely.
Thank you. So what does your um, life uh, involve uh, in Salzburg at the Mozart gym? I mean, what's your daily routine? Do you have lessons um, every day? Do you have, uh, presumably you have weekly viol lessons and on top of that you have ensemble classes. What's a typical day like for you in the Mozartian? Well, um, recently they've just um, got, gotten rid of most of the restrictions for coronavirus in Austria. Um, so until about three weeks ago, uh, we were having all of our vial lessons in person and then uh, the academic subjects were all in online classes. And um, the, the vial lessons are uh, presumably one-to-one -one, or do you have it in a masterclass format where you, know, you have a, a group of students sitting and listening to Vittorio teaching one, one student? Uh, they're usually one-to-one, -one, um, but the other students are always welcome to come in and listen to the other lessons. And then um, usually about every four weeks we have um, a kind of group lesson where we talk about um, and look at the different historical sources uh, about vial playing. Yeah, which is really important. How long, how long are they, um, how long is an individual one-to-one -one lesson? It's usually about an hour and a half. Um, so um, then you, do you have orchestra and ensemble, um, ensemble classes and um, do we, would we recognize some of the names, uh, you know, leading the orchestra or the ensembles? Yes, um, so there's usually about uh, two orchestral projects each semester. And uh, last semester we did um, Actus Tragicus by Bach, which was really nice. And um, usually the orchestral things are handled by Reinhard Goebel. Oh, excellent. Yeah, fantastic. One of my favorite musicians. <laughs> well, how lucky, how lucky are you? Fantastic. So we've got an ensemble piece next, a chamber piece by, is it Rameau? Yeah. And in fact, you, um, this is the, uh, one of the uh, concerts from the Pièce de Clavecin en Concert. And you're going to play the, the, the fifth one, which um, at the outset are the two movements named after Marie and Fauquerie, La Marie and um, La Fauquerie. Um, are you, um, what, which movements are you going to play to us? And unfortunately, we, we won't have time to, to include all of it. Yeah, um, I will play the first two movements uh, which are called La Fauquerie and La Cupie. And La, La, La Cupie is interesting, isn't it? Because it, it's, La Cupie was a dancer, am I right? And there's a paint, famous painting of La Cupie by um, Watteau, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think it's in the Wallace collection in uh, London. That's right, yeah, lovely. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Look, that's, that's, that's lovely. Um, complete performances uh, can be heard through our web website and you can go to the website and the, these videos will be there via a YouTube link and you can all uh, view the complete Ramo Pies de Cambo Clavisin from our website. Um, so, Luke, is the, the, the vial, uh, I'd like to think at least, is your, um, your foremost love, uh, putting it that way, amongst all the instruments that you play, I, I'm, I'm saying that the, the vial, I'm guessing the vial is your most favourite instrument, um, but there is a, um, another love interest a recent one. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your uh, your latest passion? Yes, so um, for about a year now I've been playing uh, the baritone um, and this came about because I, I tried out a wonderful instrument made by Shem Mackey uh, at Greenwich uh, Early Music Festival last year um, and the owner, uh, the late great Renate Bragamov um was kind enough to let me borrow it for a year so so what what is it about the baritone that you like um the thing i like about it is uh it kind of continues the tradition of viol playing on through until the kind of early 19th century um but also um it was invented around the early 17th century. So there's repertoire from kind of the whole period of when the viol was popular. And, um, and, and actually, I'm not sure if you're all acquainted with the baritone. Do you want to just tell us a little bit what the baritone is, in essence? Yeah. Um, I can got it back with you, yeah. <laughs> so the front of a baritone is essentially the same as the normal gamba. It, usually has six strings, but the later models have seven bowed ones. And um, in the later repertoire, it's tuned exactly the same as a bass gamba. So there's uh, D, A, E, C, G, D, and A. And then the defining characteristic of the instrument is if you turn it around, uh, there are some plucked metal strings on the back of the neck. Um, and the primary function of those is that you pluck them with your left thumb whilst you're bowing the normal gamba to accompany yourself. But do they you also... Think, sorry, do you think you could give us a demonstration? Um, I don't have much room in my uh, hall of residence, but you would... Um, you can bow like this. And then at the same time, you pluck with the left thumb. Oh, he seemed to have, he seemed to have frozen. Are you still there, Luke? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So you you've got you've got for this you've got a um a a piece by or, or movement or two by Lidl. So um, you, you, do you want to? Uh, point us to uh, to the bit where you you are actually doing both bowing and plucking, so that we can listen out for it. Yes, um, so I'll play two movements from this suite by a little. Um, the first one is a moderato, and the second is an adagio, um, and it exists exists in manuscript form for gamba. Very instrument. Uh, was the marathon. Um, so I kind of altered the cadenza at the end of the second movie a little to involve some hook strings. <laughs> Thank you. 
Excellent. It's tremendous and it's, it's slightly disconcerting as well because there seems to be this sort of ghostly figure that sort of played that accompaniment, you know, after the harpsichord had stopped yeah. and we were playing the cadenza and we hear this plucking sound. But of course it's done by yourself, in, uh, uh, the thumb of the left hand, isn't it, Luke? Yeah. Um, and it, it's just sort of also when, when the camera was sort of quite close to the, ba to the baritone um, and you were left on your own, one could really hear the ringing quality of the, of the baritone, I guess, because of all the extra strings that you have, it would make the instrument vibrate more. In sim those strings would vibrate in sympathy. Yeah. At least when they're in tune. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's a wonderful, wonderful instrument. I mean, is it very heavy to hold with all those extra, extra wood and strings? Um, this one in particular is quite heavy because uh, it's the one from the Mozarteum. Um, I mean, I wouldn't want to be sort of doing a recital where I've got to carry my bass gamba and a baritone. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what's next for you, Luke, and how, when will you finish your course and um, you, when can we see you back in, in the UK? Um, well, I was hoping to come back this summer, uh, but there's currently another flight ban uh, in Austria from the UK. Um, and in terms for what's next, um, now that everything's opened up a bit more, I'd love to go hunting around some of the archives that they have here in Salzburg to try and find some more gamba and baritone music. Any, any interesting musical projects coming up that we sh you'd like to tell us about? Um, any online concerts maybe organised by, by the Mozarteum? Uh, none that I can think of right now. Uh, yeah. Um, so um, I think that's probably um, all the time, time we have for um, uh, in terms of, of your presentation, but I, I think we can open um, this chat to the audience. If anybody has any questions that would like to uh, ask L Luke before we end, now is a, now is a chance. No? Well, in that case, I think um, all that remains is for me to remind you of the uh, next Viola de Gamma Society uh, meeting online, which will be a technical class, and that's going to be next Friday, the 25th of June at 7.30 p.m. UK time. And we will have Alison Kinder with us to talk about bow technique and her topic is the articulate bow and she's going to talk about how you can make your uh, bow articulate in, di in different ways to emulate speech. Um, this is a very important sk skill for viol players because we often play vocal music and when we play vocal music uh, we need to be able to do what singers do so Alison will be talking um, all about that. So do join us, that's next week, next Friday evening at uh, UK time, 7.30, 25th of June. Uh, if you've uh, enjoyed this meeting and, and the other Gamma Society meetings that you've seen so far, do consider giving, uh, leaving a donation and you go to, go to the website and there's a PayPal button there. That's the easiest way to leave a donation. And just to remind you, all the um, films of the meetings can be accessed through, through the website and uh, past and future meetings can also uh, be um, seen on the uh, website, details of future meetings. So um, can we all please give a round of applause to Luke Challoner and wish him all the best for his studies and we in the UK look forward to seeing you back at some point in the future. Thank you so much Luke. So till next time, everybody, good evening and stay well and stay safe. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.